Greetings to all of you, one and all around the world. What a time, what a time, pleasure and a great privilege to have uh, all of you on this platform where we're going to be doing most of our conversations going forward as we are uh, migrating uh, our content to the YouTube, YouTube space. In the last few days, we have um, we had a conversation with the Black, uh, Black Stout, Milk, Milk Stout. Yeah. And an interesting conversation came out there um, between uh, ourselves in, in the interview. And some extra pieces of, of information later on uh, played out onto the social media space, uh, Maponga versus and uh, you know the disagreements that happened to an extent that um, some went on to earmark and toothpick the issue where I uh, mentioned the schizophrenic uh, issue of the Christian community. I would like to put some clarity on that um, conversation that we had. When you are uh, a Christian or you are a Muslim, you need to understand firstly that you don't just wake up in the morning and you're a Christian or you wake up in the morning and you are, you are a, a Muslim. Uh, the colonialistic uh, space made it in such a way that when we, we were colonized, the religion of the colonizer became the religion of the oppressed. As such, you would be clear to just admit that had we been colonized by Buddhists, Maybe it would have been, all of us would have been Buddhists had we been colonized by Muslims as, as Kenya, Tanzania, and North Africa were the issue that they ended up actually becoming Muslims. And Southern Africa were colonized by, by Britain, Germany, and Christianity became the, the way of behavior and life in the South. And you cannot wake up in the morning, therefore, and say, uh, I, I am a Christian or I am Muslim. It, it, is not, it is not correct. Say I was colonized by the British and the religion of the British is Christianity, Anglicans. And then I became an Anglican. And with that came in Pentecostals, came in Reformed, Dutch Reformed, came in, if, the, if you are coming from the Dutch space and uh, the, the German space. And therefore religion walked hand in hand with the colonial institutions to make us what we say we are now. It is not natural that this is what we were prior to the arrival of the colonialists. Now, when you walk away from your own culture and then you say, I am now a Christian, and yet in the midst of you saying you are a Christian, you no longer do African culture, then you end up being a Christian and you're practicing Christian culture. But what you're not being honest about is that Christian culture is deeply embedded in colonial culture. So therefore, the way you marry, the way you eat, the way you do your business is actually directed by the religion of which you have accepted to become the culture. So you, you cannot say, I don't do culture. And, and, and yet you, you marry like white, you, you do business like white, you dress like white, you sing like, like, like white, and you pray like white, you eat mass and, uh, like white, and you, you pr the entire practice. We need to understand that religion comes with a culture. So I've said this a thousand times. The problem of the African is that we ate uh, the bread with the plastic. It would have been nicer to remove the ethics and the moral education of uh, Christianity and then threw away the culture that comes with it. Then we could end up at least with a functional form of, of, of our faith. Rather than us saying we don't do culture, then here we are with Easter's, here we are with Valentine's, here we are with Christmases, here we are with bunnies and eggs and things like that. And then you say, I don't do culture, I don't do culture. It is in that context that I say, if Christians say they don't do culture only to end up dressed up in white clothes when they're going to get married, you're schizophrenic because you have a split personality altogether. You, you, you say you don't do this, but yet you're that. You say you're a Christian, 
but your surname and your name is actually traditional. Your surname is actually your ancestors. Your surname actually tells you of the roots that you're coming from. And you cannot throw away and split the African and say, become this. Hence, you find that when colonialism came, it actually worked very hard to make sure that your names are changed, your business models are changed, cultures are changed, your kings are killed, and etc., so that you could move people from what they were to where we are now. It's only now in reflection, looking back where we are coming from. And I'm saying, no, you cannot, because you as a colonialist have not walked away from your culture. Why must we as Africans walk away from our own culture? You still have your monarchs in place. The British monarch here, Prince Charles, is retiring next year and giving over to his own child. And uh, not only that, but their systems are in order. They're intact. But when you come to us as Africans, it looks like we must actually face a, a, an extermination of ourselves. We need to be divorced from our from our culture. We must be, we, we, even your names need to be changed. Your behavior needs to be changed. In some certain spaces, even pastors claim that you no longer have children. Those children belong to me as a pastor. I'm the one who must get them married and etc. And for me, this is, this is quite absurd. And this schizophrenic behavior of claiming that you are this, but yet you are that, saying you don't de do this, yet you are doing this in a similar fashion, only with different language and different expression. To me, in my own space, that's what I call a split personality. That is actually schizophrenic. So I'm not retracting those words, that those who have become obsessed with the Christian interpretation and they say they don't do culture only to end up doing European culture. I think you need some, we need some mental, mental assessment because it, those two things cannot be that you, you divorce yourself from your own culture only to end up doing the culture of the other people. And if you end up doing their culture, who is doing your culture? For every time you try to be like them, you are forfeiting them an opportunity to experience you. And when you become like them, then who becomes like you? We are here to promote authenticity of our own African cultural spaces and expression and expression. So there is no, there's no issue that we should find ourselves arguing as to what culture is superior to the other. Rather, we should be talking as to what is authentic self-determination, self-actualization and upgrade uphold our own indigenous knowledge systems and practices so that no other culture has a right of walking up to another culture and demonize them and promote your own culture as superior to the other cultures that are around you. That is not right. So don't be led astray. Say, I'm a Christian. Jesus has no culture. Christianity has no culture. Jesus has no color. And all these beautiful, beautiful commentaries that we hear. It's, 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 a, it's window dressing because in reality, this very Jesus that you talk about has a culture that he is coming from. The people who practice this Christianity have a culture which they uphold, have behaviors that they uphold. They have rituals that they uphold. Every Sunday, every Saturday, you go to a church, you eat, you drink mass and you eat uh, bread and etc. You make some rituals. You translate these things to become other things. And if you don't call that a culture and you don't call these rituals and the word culture inside it, cult, there is a cult there. And with cults come rituals. And for you to say, I don't do culture as a Christian, yet you are practicing European culture. I think you need mental assessment. With those few words, be authentic, be true to who you are.